I believe we're ready now. We're ready to go. We're live. We're live. Yes, please. Well, it's, it's the Think and Reimagine podcast. Welcome, everyone, and thank you for finding time to join us again. We are talking about social media engagement, how to connect and build a community. Antonella Raguna joins us for the first time. She is the founder of the Marketing Nest, a company with some 20 years experience in marketing. And we're going to be learning a lot from her on this episode. Everyone wants to grow the numbers on social media. We just do not understand how the algorithm works. My wife called my attention to her Instagram page the other day. It's like someone is just zipping the number with a straw. The number keeps going up and down. However, Dr. Ama is here, who I believe isn't even on any of the social media platforms. Are you Are sure, you... Nefemi? <laughs> she's on LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Oh, she's on LinkedIn. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> You know, I was going to ask you, uh, Antonella, if it's possible for anybody not to be on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter these days. Absolutely. I mean, it depends who you want to talk to. It depends on your audience. Uh, me personally, I actually prefer and absolutely love LinkedIn and Twitter. So for my type of audience, I found that, you know, we do Facebook and Instagram, but we don't put the effort that we put on Twitter and LinkedIn. So it really depends on who you are. It depends on your personality and who you're trying to reach. So it's, you know, it's not one size fits all. It's what you're most comfortable with. Dr. Tama, I think no. Twitter will fit yes. you more. Are you concerned? Really? No, I am not. But you know, Nifemi, that the business Live Abundantly Allied Empowerment, they are on Twitter. Yeah. So we're on all the platforms, Twitter, uh, what do you call it? Instagram, the one that you like very much. Um, we're also on um, LinkedIn. I tend to spend a bit more time on LinkedIn um, because the types of engagement and questions that I get um, sort of tweak my brain and then I can express myself. I am actually learning and I'm going to be honest with everyone. Antonella is teaching me quite a bit on how to engage with people um, via LinkedIn. And uh, we hope that she's going to help us as an organization um, within the other platforms. But I do want to say this, Nifemi. What I realize more and more is about building a relationship. You know, it is about relationship building, uh, connecting with your audience, connecting with potential um, audience and businesses. And so one has to be, you almost have to think about it as a dating, you know, um, a dating phenomenon. You know, if you've been on a date, you, you got married, you still take your wife out on dates. So if you can think about the core of how you build that relationship, I think you will be on the right track, or at least that's what I'm learning these days. So I'm learning to date myself on LinkedIn, so to speak, <laughs> and, and to sort of draw the audience into the content that I, I, I reshare or I post, and at the same time, engage with others because uh, that's what people are looking for. That's what businesses are looking for. But, uh, you know, being authentic with myself, and I find it much easier for me to do this on, on LinkedIn than I do on Instagram or Twitter. There's another one, isn't there? I've left one. Loads. <laughs> There's loads. <laughs> oh, but the God, other so thing many. that I wanted to add is a lot of people um, rel look at followers and things like that as a successful or failure of the platform. I have a client that has about 3,000 followers on uh, Instagram and I can't remember how many, and actually they don't get any business. So it's more about, you know, what relationship you have and how you nurture it rather than looking at those numbers is better. You know, sometimes it's better maybe to grow it organically and slowly and build those relationships so they can last a long time and they're not just scrollers or accidental likes and comments, basically. So you're saying that it's not um, 
really in the number as much as it is in the engagement with your audience, Antonella? I mean, you use analytics, obviously, to understand which posts did better and which one maybe you should work on. But I think what you need to focus more is who is your audience? What do they want? What is their pain? What they're struggling with? What answer can you can, can you actually provide for, you know, you know whatever they're going through and when you do that when you actually focus more on helping your audience and being there for them the rest will come naturally when you focus too much on i need to have followers i need to do you you do not come across as real authentic um because you people that do that they always end up using like sales technique and sales pitches and, and they don't actually sound authentic so we usually say to our clients, get rid of your fears. There's no need for, for fears. There's no one that is perfect. No one is better than another one. You are you. You're the only one that can do the best job at being you. So people will connect with you. So as long as you're being your true self, that's all you need to do. And obviously there's little tricks like, you know, um, it, I, you know, I will tell you later on today, but like, you know, when you put in a comment, are you just saying thank you and that's it? Or are you using that comment space to actually draw the attention to what it is that you're trying to do? So maybe if, like Dr. Amma was saying, you know, social media is like being a relationship. So if we, we were on a social media post, I would write like, which I actually wrote about a post about that this morning. But I would say absolutely, because when I run campaigns with my clients, social media campaigns with my clients, we actually tell them to nurture the social media platform. Now, if you were to do another business, it's the same way. You just need to, without selling, tell people what makes you special. And, um, and I think that's the key. And the more you engage uh, as well with other people, the better the results are. Interesting, Atanella. You're saying that um, I'd like you to talk to us more about the engagement that you touched on. Yeah. Particularly using the comment section yeah. in order to, you know, engage your audience. Yeah. You, I mean, yes. Yeah, so there's actually something we are designing at the moment with Marketing Nest. So everyone knows you can like and, and put a smiley face or, with, you know, if you're on LinkedIn or you put a different reaction. But you can actually put a picture within your comment. And we are creating different pictures with different emotions um, for different things that we may want to say. And our team can then use it for different social media platforms. So that is one way that you can just be slightly different from if you imagine maybe you're commenting on someone that has 200 comments, people are scrolling through. Uh, if you have a picture, someone may stop and think, oh, what's that about? And they might actually take notice of you a little bit more rather than everyone else that's just writing loads of paragraphs. So we have been doing that with our clients, but not ourselves. So now we actually say, actually, let's stop and do that for ourselves as well. You know, just give a bit more you know, focus on, on that comment section and also mention people. So say, mm -hmm. for example, we, you know, there's a social media post and um, there is, let's assume the uni family love cooking, hypothetically, uh, and the post is about Italian food. I might say, at Nifemi, have you seen this post? Do you love cooking? What's your favorite recipe? And, or give us your tips. Now you may put your little tips about cooking, but then you can say, you know, you can try to as well introduce them to what it is that you do and, you know, who you are without selling. And that, I think, is the difficult sometimes, not selling, but introducing who you are. So if I may interject, you're talking about being curious. Yeah. And so get them to be curious about yeah. you just as much as you're curious about whatever it is that's being featured. It's a bit like uh, if you've been to a networking event or a party, let's put, let's say a party, let's take it away from work. And um, you go to the party, you meet, you, you know, some of the people, and then you see, I don't know, your cousin that doesn't know anyone, you will take that cousin around to meet everyone else. And you tell people, oh, here is my cousin. He's an amazing architect. He does X, Y, Z, da, 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 da. And your cousin then would introduce themselves. It's kind of what you need to do on social media. What I usually say to people, don't act differently on social media than you would in real life, because it's exactly the same thing. You know, we are doing the same thing. It's just that you have to type 
or, you know, some time instead of, you know, uh, meeting people face to face. So you have to type or a video or an audio, but essentially the, the, the content is the same. Absolutely. Uh -huh. I also think that perhaps one of the challenges that many have, especially <laughs> small business holders who have to manage their social media themselves, is the problem of consistency. Just, just how often do you think that um, um, content should be put on a platform? If let, me ask, to see that platform let me ask you a question before I answer. Do you think consistency is just to do with content? Or do you think consistency is to do with engagement as well as content? Well, perhaps you would help us understand the difference between engagement okay. and um, social media content. Yeah. So basically a content you know, is whatever you're posting. So the problem that people think when they think consistency, they think I have to physically post about my company, about something every single day, which is true. You know, in the ideal world, that would be better. Um Imagine that some you, you're really busy, like all of us sometimes are. You haven't got the time to actually post something so about your company or something or uh, about your services, but you still should put the effort of actually engaging with people. So liking people's posts, commenting on people's posts, sharing people's posts, uh, writing to them on it, you know, in the in a direct like in the DMs. Those are actions that sometimes are actually more powerful than a post that you send out. So what I usually say to my clients is if you are busy, it takes 15 minutes at most to just do a bit of engagement, you know, on social media. Just go on it, have a look at who's, who's writing what, you know, touch base with a few friends, you know, social media friends. And that is so powerful because we all get busy, uh, but we should try to make an effort to keep the connection going. So it's a bit like social media is the glue and the stronger the glue, the stronger the bond. So if you work on that, on that and you use a good glue, the bond will be very strong. I've met yesterday someone that I only met online digitally and it was so nice to actually go to an event and meet him. And he, it was actually much better than, than, than online. And we were laughing the whole time because it's a hilarious guy. And, you know, and the bond will grow more and more and more from there because you, we spent to think about a year digitally or a bit less than a year digitally getting to know each other. But the more you work on that, the stronger you get. Absolutely. I think I get your point about engagement now. Let's bring in uh, Peter Hammond Boyo into this conversation. Uncle P, I see a lot of your content online. It's quite exciting and entertaining. Uh, you travel, your your love of food. I mean, I never knew <laughs> that. Um, <laughs> each time I looked through your feeds, I'm like, I need to go out with you one day. At least I'll eat a lot of good stuff. There must be a lot of work you're putting into that, right? Um, actually, it's not as much work as you think because I just um, try to be natural and post things that I like. And if you enjoy what you're doing, of course, your audience is going to also enjoy what you're posting because they see what you're doing. They see the enjoyment. They see the interaction. And um, talking about engagement, I have 20 something thousand um, followers, which is not a lot because my peers have like 1 million. But when I post, I find out the same um, people that comment always. I, I don't say they're loyal, but they always comment and they watch it. And when I when I respond to each comment, I personalize it. I've gotten to know so many of them now that if you post, um, if I post something and you comment, I actually know how to respond to that person because I look at their page, I look at them and the way we interact is, is like um, Anton, Antonella was saying, it's like a um, relationship because I have people that have been responding to my posts for like two years. So. If someone responds, I will say, hello, how are you? I haven't heard from you in a long time. Or it's not just thank you or yes or absolutely or um, I see you. So when you engage in that personalized way, you, you find out that whatever you post, people enjoy it. And I give them what I enjoy. So that's how I post interesting you, you built your own community basically so if you have the, yes. 
the same people that are, that are helping you and supporting you, that is basically your community. So you could take it the next step and actually create a group, uh, where there is a Facebook group, Instagram, you know, whichever way, or you can even go outside social media, do a, um, a WhatsApp group or create a login area uh, behind your website where then you have a chat room for those loyal people. There's some number of ways that you can actually, that's how you start building a community. So, and, you know, you need to reward people that are there for you. So the people that show up and uh, support you. So, um, so yeah. So Talking what I'm about. hearing from you, I'm so, so sorry, Nefemi, can you hear me? Am I audible? Yes, please go ahead. Yes, you are. Okay. So Antonella, what I'm hearing from you and what this is, what I'm, the engagement we're having today is it's not okay to just say absolutely or thank you, or you, you really do need to authentically engage with people, get to know them, and then go back and like some of their stuff. Because if you like or comment on their pages, then they're likely to come back when you post something. So there's a give and take as you would have in any relationship. Yeah, I mean, there is a little trick that um, one of my colleagues actually uh, shared with me. And it's um, if you post, say, for example, you post something yesterday and you have some people commenting on it. The instinct that most of us have is like, reply, like, reply, or like, reply, which we all did that. And I, I did that. And uh, my colleague said to me, actually, hold your horses on the liking reply to everyone then the next day just before you sending your post go back to yesterday's post and like everyone that you know liked your previous post what would that happen is in the algorithm they would say you're keeping the connection and they will get a notification that you liked it and they might look on your profile to see let's see what she's doing today so you kind of keep that momentum kind of going um you know all the time so, you know, that's like, there's loads of little kind of tricks like that that might work, might not work, but it's worth trying. There's also when you put in a reply, you know, kind of, you know, be live for the first, you know, as soon as you sent it, then wait 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, the algorithm would actually lower your, your ranking. If you then reply, then, then you boost it back up. So you get an... 40 minutes or whatever if you keep doing it then obviously you get I don't know what would happen if you keep doing it because I do it usually twice and then I just uh, if you know we just walk away because obviously you know you have other things that you obviously can post again it's Antonella not, I'm so sorry like of- can I just ask can I just ask for clarification so if somebody posts yeah and and this is both for Antonella and um, Peter somebody's post when you go to it, do you reply or do you like first? Which is better? You reply first, and then the next okay. day you going the, the next day you go back to yesterday and click like on everyone that replied to you. So if you do that, I, I don't always do it, but if you do that, if you have engagement in your on your engagement hat on, when you do that, you, it's almost like you you sending them a little bell and you say, "Hey, I'm still alive. I'm here." And it's a reminder for them to look at your profile and see what you're doing. Um, I, I do the same thing, but I do mine in reverse because um, sometimes I'm lazy. So I reply like maybe three or four. And then like in the hours later, I come back and try to reply as much as possible. And then I, after that, I click on like mm-hmm. so that it keeps going and they keep getting the notification. So is that a right way to? Yeah, I mean, I, uh, I usually, the reason why I say comment, reply first, and then like after, is because in platform like, for example, LinkedIn, LinkedIn, what you what it shows is your latest activity. So if okay. you like first and then reply, um, it won't show your, your latest post as the latest action, it will show your reply. So what you want is your latest to be ideally your latest post. So that's why I usually advise my client, if you reply first and then like the next day, or you know you can like even later on in the reply later on in the day. But if you do the liking just before you're posting your next one, that will be a lot more powerful. And um, so, how often do you post? Okay, I'm uh, so sorry. Try to aim every day, depending on the platform. Platform like Instagram, multiple time a day would be ideal. 
hence why I don't like Instagram <laughs> personally. Um, but try every day. And then there is little tricks, like say, for example, Dr. Rama, you saw my post this morning about um, how social media and relationship are basically similar. And you reshare that post with your comment. Now that is your post for the day. You've done that your bit because you introduced your, you put your views, you introduced your company. That is your post done. So it's not always that has to be this big, massive post, you know, with a, uh, pictures and stuff and whatever not you can reshare someone put your input and do that ideally it would have, it would have to be daily if you can at least three times a week it would be the minimum for linkedin for example uh, but engaging daily definitely multiple times um, a day if you can one thing i've discovered now is stories and whatsapp status like my whatsapp status is more active than any other social media I have because when I post, I get like 100 um, views in like two hours and then people are reposting it and asking for, um, can you send me this video or can you send me this post or making a comment. So I find out that stories and um, status is also, if not more engaging yeah. than the actual posts. Again, it depends a lot on the audience. So I had a client in Jamaica and uh, he has a bar cafe and I was shocked when they said actually WhatsApp work better, better than other platforms. So we did, you know, we, you know, within our strategy, we had all this status that he could put on his WhatsApp and he could put different uh, cards they could send to his groups and, and whatnot, because that's where the audience is more receptive so um, it, it's just basically really understanding who your audience is and what are their pains and, and then acting. Like if you have, hypothetically, even if you're a startup and you think, do you know what, I would love to work with restaurants, just go to a restaurant and just ask them, what is your behavior? Like, what do you do? You know, just try to get to know your audience, even if you don't have clients as a startup or if you do have clients, then the that's amazing. Just ask your clients, do a little questionnaire, even if you want, but get to know your audience and understand their buying behavior. Where do they go to find you? How do they choose to, to, to buy from you? And ultimately make sure that whether you are on LinkedIn, Instagram, whatever platform on your website, your email, you have a call to action and make sure you stick to, you know, you, yeah, maybe you can have even a selection of call to action, but make sure you always leave them with a, a call to action, something they need to do. Otherwise, all your social media effort will be wasted. Uh, so I just checked my last post on Facebook now, Antonella, and I have some 182 comments. Are you saying to be effective, I have to reply everyone? Yeah, you should. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, do you know something I discovered? When you reply people, they they actually appreciate it and feel um some type of authenticity that you acknowledge them. Even if you reply a week later, that actual reply gives them some sense of pride or I don't know the word to use, but I've noticed that a lot. Sometimes I see a post like six weeks later and I reply it and the person is like, Thank you for replying me. Um, you people in the media, you don't normally reply people like us. I'm like, people like you, I reply everyone. So sometimes I, I just discovered that when you reply people, it makes them feel appreciated. Yeah. And the fact that they yeah. take their time to comment on your posts is also appreciated. Wow. But you know, the bottom line is that people just want to be acknowledged. We've always known this. Yeah. So by acknowledging people when they respond to what you've posted is, um, is vital. Yeah. I, I suppose that's part of relationship building, isn't it? And Absolutely. Again, and again, we're going back to basic. That's the same thing that happened in real life. If someone keeps sending you a client, no social media, nothing, like physical client, they call you and say, here is a client, here's a client, here's a client, here's a client. And you never thank them. You never bother to talk to them. You never bother to make an effort. Do you think that person would actually continue to make that effort with you? So, you know, it's a lot to keep on the engagement, uh, but it's definitely worth it. 
um, you know, to take that time, even if you don't do it all on the same day, like Peter said, but it's definitely worth it. You can also be a connector, you know, it's a very powerful, like I'm part of an amazing network um, with Dr. Rama called Savitas, and we support, you know, each other through the network, we, you know, whether it's online or whether it's offline. And if I heard someone that hypothetically would, I don't know, would love to uh, attend a women networking event, I send them to Savitas. If they hear someone that wants a website, they would direct it to me. You want to be the con- known as the connector, known as the one that has all the answers, basically. Um, and, you know, and, and, and that it will help your social media game furthermore. Actually, I have an example. Um, last week, Dr. Amar sent me something on LinkedIn and she reminded me that I have LinkedIn. So I opened my <laughs> LinkedIn and saw the post. And then I, I discovered that LinkedIn is now more user-friendly and has messages. And I saw a message from 2015 where someone said, please, can you um, recommend me? And I re- responded and the person thanked me like she's been waiting since 2015. So that was... <laughs> Yes. <laughs> LinkedIn has, uh, as I would say, after COVID, LinkedIn has changed drastically. Yeah. I was, I used to be more a Twitter person, and now I'm actually converted because it's changed so much. You can do your blog, you can do your articles, you can do so many things with LinkedIn. You can do lives. You can do so many things that um, you know it, it. It actually is worth having a look. Um, I did a live this morning with someone it's live on, on LinkedIn today um, you know you can do so much with LinkedIn that is worth kind of looking at it so can about... I ask a question I'm so sorry if I mean to interrupt ahead, but I'm just curious I'm really curious right now we are live on Instagram and Facebook are you telling me that we could be live on LinkedIn as well yeah it depends what platform you use and everything, but yeah. Okay. So they, they something new today. Yeah, yeah. There's a different platform for for LinkedIn, but yes. Well, thank you. So today, Jenny, are you there? Believe it or not, I hate cameras, so I've always shied away from cameras. So a uh, new year, I said I'm gonna kind of kill that fear and just go for it. So uh, today was actually my first live with uh, this amazing PR lady, um, Amanda Fitzgerald. And, she, and you know, I said to her, you actually made it look feel so natural because it was just having a normal chat. And I don't know why I was so much in my head all of this time. And now you guys. So thank you. <laughs> Welcome on board. Thank you. Interesting. So um, you talked about rewarding followers earlier. There's what they call giveaways. Um, a situation where you throughout maybe a quiz and then and you know your followers get to win some sums of money or an item how effective is that uh, to grow in a community online yeah i mean to be honest it could be a giveaway or it could be actually a just fun, just a bit of an online fun it doesn't always have to be a present or something it could be i don't know free tips or um it could be just a little bit of fun we've done it uh we've done a post a while ago about guest the logo um and we didn't have a price at the end because we wanted to see how many you know if people would actually connect with us forget the price forget anything and um you know we had you know people trying to guess the the logo uh i think i went a bit too italian on one so not many people knew it because i'm italian so i just had to put an italian brand in there i think i put only one um and it's just a, a bit of fun uh, again you know um just break from the norm you know you don't want to just always send the same type of post you know there's so many different type of posts you can do you can share fun facts about you you can you know do competitions you can do a raffle you can do you know a joke I think there was a, the, the one this morning actually was a joke um, um, that I kind of put it and then I had a post attached to it as well so you just need to have fun with it. Uh, otherwise, like every, like you know, Peter was saying, if you if you fa- if you have fun, you don't you know you don't mind. But if you take it as a chore, I never liked chores when I was little, and I don't like it as a grown up. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. 
But it does seem that it requires so much time. At the beginning, yeah. I mean, it, it does require time, but it's like anything. When you start something new, at the beginning, it's a lot. And then you get used to it and it becomes part of your daily routine. You talked about posting everything. Oh, sorry. I discovered something about giveaways. When you do giveaways, especially monetary giveaways, you get a lot of giveaway followers. And the minute you stop giving away, they stop uh, following you. <laughs> so it's good, it's good to do giveaways like um, the equity giveaway with scholarships or posting people's videos. So then you get authentic people. But when you do monetary giveaways, they come and there are people that are on social media just for giveaways. They're called giveaway followers and they bombard your um, DM with mails. And especially in this part of the world, you start getting stories and things. So giveaways is good in a way and it's also bad in a way. Wow. That's very instructive. I won't try it then. <laughs> I think it's just as long as you have fun. Um, we do a yes. lot, you know, we do a lot more for our clients, to be fair, because uh, I usually put my clients first and then myself after. The problem. Um, and, but it's just as long as you have fun. Um, whatever, it's fun. And also remember, uh, when it comes to take, you know, giveaways and stuff like that, you need to have a marketing strategy prepared for that. Don't just start doing a giveaway because you happen to have that extra amount of money that moment. Make sure you go back to your strategy. Make sure you see, is that actually, can I afford it within my strategy? Or is this something else that might take priority over, a, you know, a giveaway post? There might be some other things that you can put that money towards that give you better results and better returns. What about sponsored posts? How effective are those? Again, it depends on your social media strategy. It depends on your budget. Um, like Peter was saying, he's got loads of followers and he's got um, you know, a community. So he wouldn't need to really do much of that. I personally believe it is good to actually grow organically. And then you know, if you have a campaign, if you have something that you want to just boost, then fair enough, boost it. But don't, you know, if you start spending money on social media, you could be spending like thousands. Um, so just grow it organically. Don't rush. Um, it's a bit like losing weight, although I'm still trying. The quicker you <laughs> do it, the quicker you put it back. So it's the same way. Um, so, so, yeah. So when I manage to lose weight in a normal way, I'll let you know about that one too. <laughs> okay. I have and a I'll... question for you, Anton. Go ahead. Go ahead, Peter. Okay. With sponsors ads, when you're doing a sponsored ad, it also gives you um, different tools for targeting the niche that you're trying to get to. So sometimes sponsors ads, like Antonella said, when you're doing a campaign, you can target your um, ads towards that niche. So it's good um, when you have a campaign. But um, doing it for doing sake, sometimes it's just a waste of money because you will have like 20,000 views. And if you're selling something, you would have one sale because you're just putting it out there for without any di direction or strategy. Yeah. So it's good when you have a campaign going on. It's interesting. I was going to comment that we've done a few campaigns, but we've usually done our campaigns because we're promoting a program in the hopes that it will then help um, generate uh, what we call mindful giving, which is donations. And it has not worked so far. So there must be a piece that we're missing that's preventing us from having I mean, some... There's little, like, little things, like you've done so many podcasts, you've done so many activities, you must have um, people that are waiting to actually help you. It could be something as simple, dropping in their DM and say, this is what's going on, keep an eye, stay tuned, and that is actually more powerful because you actually, you're talking to, you can even prepare the message. So I'm not saying that every single time you need to go, hi, Peter, I know you love food. And da, da, da. You can actually say, hi, no, you know, this is what's going on. You prepare a nice message to let them know um, that that's going on. Or if you have a group, 
for your community. You you announce it to the group in, in within your community. This is what's going on. Please support us. You know we need your help. There's nothing wrong. We're actually asking for help um, because at the end of the day, people might just might just think that you actually don't need any help and you're fine with it. So if you never ask, you never get. True. Very true. Very and then in the, in the sponsored ads, there's places where you can choose a demographic, age group, um, interests. So if you're like we're doing the mindful giving, we're not going to go to people that take photographs or in looking for music. We're going to people that are into social change or mindful giving. So there's demographics you can actually pinpoint and choose so that it goes directly to those people. Same the other thing you could do, and I learned this actually from Amanda Fitzgerald, um, you could use Twitter to find the people, some of the people. So, and not just any of the people. Say, for example, you, you know, uh, Peter loves food. So <laughs> you, I, I, I remember that because I love food. So we, me and you can talk forever on that. Um, but say, for example, you want to have some exposure. You, ha I don't know, you, are, you have a bakery and you want to some exposure, you can go on, on Twitter and uh, search, put it between quotes and search journalist food or journalist bakeries, and you will get the, you know, the, the people that you want to connect with. You can then contact them directly and tell them what your cause is about and see if they can support you. A lot of them are just waiting for content, are just waiting for someone to help them. So it's not always about spending money. Sometimes you can avoid spending that money because I had a client that was spending 400 pounds a month and getting nothing out of it. And then started doing things like bit behind, she used to say, and actually she got more return. So sometimes slow down and actually look, okay, who am I trying to get? And who has more chances to get there quicker than I have? A journalist will have quicker chances then no matter how many people you boost on any social media platform. So if you get the right journalist and you build that report, you're laughing because they will share that with you and they, they will, you know, their audience will share it and it will be much easier. But it's building Femi, again. Did you hear that? I knew you were going to call my name, Dr. Tama. <laughs> <laughs> I was just expecting you to say that. That's why I didn't talk. But anyways, <laughs> um, Antonella, are there mm. more tips or tricks that you'd like to share with us? Because I've seen people even advertise um, buying followers. Does that work? No, I hate it. Because there is actually a platform out there that can tell you who, who buys the followers. So they can actually analyze if a profile is authentic and has authentic followers or if actually it's fake and it will give you a rating. So it's the worst thing you can do. It's like, you know, you may have thousands of followers, but if you're not getting any business, is there any point? You know, let's drop this fakeness about having to look a certain way. Let's go for quality. Let's actually organically grow your, your audience. You buy a follower, it doesn't mean that they're actually going to buy from you. They could be in Timbuktu and your audience is not in there. You may, your audience may be just London-based, hypothetically. So just, you know, grow it organically. And, um, you know, there's not... Yeah, there are few there are few quite a few tricks. Like for example, if Twitter, if you do a search on Twitter, put it between quotes, you find the people that are actually looking for you. So use that platform. So say for example, I go on Twitter and I look for anyone that wants branding and I put it between quotes. That person might be on Instagram. That person might be on LinkedIn. All I need to go is the rest of the platforms to find that person, connect with that person, and you know repeat the process basically. So there's. There's different things that can be done. It's just, you know, trying to think, how would I do this in real life? Would you go and buy friends? I, I surely don't. So keep it real of what you were doing your, in your real life, you know, and, uh, and try to apply it on your social media platform. Well, this has been very thought provoking because suddenly I realize more now more than ever that my relationship with my with social media is also a relationship with another entity, which I could just 
you know, um, substitute yeah. for a, a friend. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Exactly. Uh-huh. It's really good. Yeah. Nifemi, did Absolutely. you have another question? Oh, yes, indeed. Um, so let's talk to us about how we can engage followers with some of the live programs that we have. So take Live Abundantly, for instance. Mm. Uh, you know, we have programs um, for women, for children, uh, beyond just transmitting them live on our platforms. How can we use content from these programs to engage our followers? Well, you can do what uh, Peter, uh, Peter was talking about Instagram earlier. You could do reels. So, you know, uh, you could go different, uh, you know, for example, if you add uh, another platform, not that you should, but like TikTok and you can start making videos to share what you've done. Um, you know, you could actually do competitions, like we said before. Uh, you could talk to your community and actually ask them what they want to see and what they want to hear. Do a poll you know, like a poll post or, um, and see what people, you know, are thinking on a certain, uh, a certain topic and, you know, what they would like to hear about a certain topic. Um, so you would have to tell me a bit more about a campaign in particular for me to kind of go more into depth, but the core of engagement is to really build that relationship and then, you know, use your blog, so say, for example, you have a website, write a blog about it. And then within that blog, you use your social, you plan your social media. So if your event is in a, in a month, you write your blog at the beginning of the month and you split it into, say, four or five paragraphs. Every week you focus on one paragraph and you you go in depth into that, whatever you want to cover in that paragraph. And then you do that the, the next week and the week after and the week after. So if you plan your social media ahead of time, you then can do cross marketing. So you can do on your blog, you can do on your direct mail, you can do on WhatsApp, like we were talking about earlier, and you can also do it on social media. But it takes planning. It's, it sounds complicated, but it's just if you plan things, then you can develop the engagement that you're looking for. So you've spoken to us about the power of engagement, not just um, posting content daily. Yeah, but engaging engaging uh, followers and the community via the comment section. We've also talked about the need to grow these platforms organically. How soon do you do we expect to start seeing results? At what point do you say, "Oh, I don't think this is working," or at what point do you say, uh, "Do you expect to uh, yeah. this um, the feedback and the following to catch up?" with the investment you're making? I think it's not a matter of, I don't think this is working. If you're not seeing any anything, it could be a number of reasons. Maybe you're not talking about the right things. You're not commenting the right way. You need to tweak the way you're talking to people. Um, I used an example actually this morning on, on the live about TikTok. I opened a TikTok account just because I wanted to figure out what it was all about. And I actually wanted something to switch off from my normal life and just you know just scroll basically I didn't have a picture and I still don't have a picture on it I don't have any material on that platform all I do is actually comments and that's it you know and I've done actually a test around Christmas where I was commenting heavily because I had more time <laughs> so I was commenting heavily like on different things and supporting different you know people without actually putting any comment I didn't invite any of my friends and I think within the first month, it was like something 150 followers or something. I know it's not a lot, but if you think there was no picture, there was no content whatsoever, that just came from engaging. And it wasn't like I had my business hat on. It was just me just engaging. You know, I wanted to see if people did the least amount of work just by engaging, can they actually get followers? And then the minute you stop doing that, like Peter was saying earlier, those engagements goes down and they disappear eventually. So, um, you know, and that's the, the, that's the power of engagement, you know, keep the connection, uh, comment on people's posts, um, like their posts, tag them on different posts, cross platform. So if you, you're on Instagram and, you know, you know, someone on LinkedIn might like Peter's post, 
why don't you go on LinkedIn and say, look what Peter just sent. I think this is amazing. He does this, you know, blah, blah, blah. And you boost him. And eventually Peter will think, actually, he helped me out on that. Let me do the same. So it, that is what it is about. I mean, it's not just one little trick that you do and it does all of the engagement. It's a lot of different actions that put together will boost your engagement. I've learned a lot today. I think I have oh, to no, end um, this podcast so that we can oh, okay. go and engage my community and reply all my messages. Uh, but I would take a final <laughs> comment from Peter Abbott Boyu at uh, Dr. <laughs> Abbott, and then I'll return to you and to Nella for uh, for the tips you'd love to share with us. Please go on, Mr. Boyu. Okay. Um, two things: inclusivity. Um, when you include your, I call them audience or whatever you want to call them. You that's the engagement. It's like going to a party and you just go and you sit down, and you don't talk to anybody, and you're just there. You what are you doing there? So you can be a wallpaper. It's the same thing in social media. You have to be inclusive, you have to talk to your audience, you have to make them feel like you're talking to them, not at them. And CAT call to action, ask them questions, tell them to respond or tell them to do something and post and repost and support and you'll be supported. So that's how social media works for me. Well, I what, what can I say? This has been an incredibly interesting conversation and I have learned the importance of um, building a relationship with my um, LinkedIn because I, I do operate more on LinkedIn than anywhere else, but building a relationship with people on LinkedIn, my followers, um, being authentic, which I, I really strive to always be authentic and being curious for me. I'm, I'm now curious to try new things uh, and to expand the relationship. But the visual I shall walk away with today is it's a relationship as you would with anybody else. And if you're not curious, if you're not authentic, if you don't trust Trust is a big factor here. You've got to trust that what you're putting out there is the right thing, but you have to have a trusted relationship so that people know that you're going to comment and respond and they would expect you to do likewise. Um, and I'm just really grateful for Antonella joining us today. And I'm going to be honest right now and say Antonella is going to be working with us on Live Abundantly and Allied Empowerment to help us be more authentic and more connected with our followers on social media. So thank you. And I'm looking forward to that collaboration. Same here. All right, let's, ha let's have a final comment, Antonella, on this. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, a lot of people ask me, how do you write an actual social media post? Because some people freeze, some people hate, uh, they don't know where to start. And I usually say, have a good headline that grabs people. Use your personality. And, sorry, uh, use your personality to show in that post and, um, you know, grab their attention. After you do that, then make sure you know what you're trying to say, you know, what you want to, you know, what content you want to share with them. And make sure you actually put the benefit and mention people, give them a freebie, dialogue, like it's a two way, it's not a monologue, it's, you know, it's a social platform, so be social. You know, if you're a joker and you are good at telling jokes, I'm not, but if you're good, put a joke there, put, show your personality that makes you unique. I know I'm, I, I, can, I always stand out when I go to events and I have this Italian accent that apparently people like and uh, I have my quirky ways and I try to put that within my social media. And then last, but definitely not least, always end with a question and a call to action. Because if you ask a question, people are more prone to actually put a comment because you, you've asked them a question. And then end with a call to action. So, you know, you've written about hypothetically social media tell them that you have an offer where they can have a, a, a you know, I'm, I'm using marketing nest, for example, you can have a nest hour where you have, um, you know, um, a free how and what to post. You have free post reviews for, you know, um, you tell them the price. The hour one at the moment is 89 pounds. So you can actually use your platform and end that post with something that you tell them what to do. So click here to go there or contact me 
to benefit from this. So the effort that you put on your social media is not wasted and there is an ultimate goal there. Thank you so very much for sharing with us, Antonella. Uh, I believe that um, we have learned a lot and our social media platforms will never remain the same again. Dr. Abba, thank you for sharing with us as well. We had Peter Amon Boyu on this one, actor and filmmaker. Um, so um, just we're looking forward to the revolutionary change that will happen to our social media platforms that live abundantly and think and reimagine as soon as we have Antonella on board. Uh, see you guys again next week with another lovely one. I'm Lee Femi Gutoye. It's bye for now. Thank you, everyone. Have a lovely yeah. evening. Bye-bye. Thank you. Ciao, ciao. Yeah. Ciao. Ciao, Bella. <laughs>